um, certain places are. And so apparently, age limit. the lady said something and didn't like it much. Oh, babe, I'll take some, uh, I'll take some more time, man. You want some rice? Yeah. All right. Well, just, I mean, we're going to talk about how the food tastes. We're going to talk about our life in general. We're going to kind of introduce ourselves to how we are and, you know, how we met and things like that. The different things will come up in this video. Mm -hmm. You want some? Mm hmm. I mean, okay, I'm going to lie. Because this was, like, not cheap. No, it wasn't cheap at all. It was like $65. Right. But I took some off because the nigga was not trying to pay no $65 for um no Chinese food. Uh, uh, even though I'm like, for what? Right. I just spent sixty dollars just <laughs> For what? I had stuff. We ate. What were you yesterday? Um wing stop. See, I didn't even remember eating wing stop. You don't remember that? I was asleep. Baby, you woke up and ate it. I did. Yeah. Don't remember that. All day yesterday. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Mm-mm. What? The chow mein tastes burnt. Okay. So you mean a wish? No. Know? The fried rice tastes burnt. Let me see oh, what you're yeah, talking no. about. It has a burnt taste to it. Am I wrong? Sort of, kind of, but to me, I like stuff like this. It, it enhances the flavor to me. It's good. It tastes burnt. To me, it tastes burnt. To me, it's good. <laughs> Look, it got a little burn on them. Oh, it's on the fry, on the, um, the rice part, though. The rice is burnt. I'm not going to lie. Okay. We're going to well. taste this Mongolian... This Mongolian lamb. Alright, I'm gonna put some um my sizzling lamb on yours. And if it's the same, I'm gonna I'm really be mad. If it's what? It's the same. I'll be like, oh, so y'all just put cook too much and then put it in two different containers and then it renamed it something else. Of course. No, right. this will be my last time getting Chinese food if that's the case. Shouldn't be getting it now. I ain't had Chinese food since. Since they had the whole rat theory, it was considered chicken. I was like, what in the world? That don't look like chicken. <laughs> mm -mm. But I love Chinese food. This is... This is alright. I don't think it's $15 worth. I don't think it's $15 worth here. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, let's do mukbangs. I can make some some homemade food. Next time. Nobody want to listen to me, though. Right? Then I said that. We're right? still, I mean, we're like, still mm -hmm. good, though. I'm sorry. Okay, mm -hmm. but today, we're going to talk about different topics of our life. You know? I'm mad because we spent $50 on it. We get the money back. We get the money back, definitely. Okay, so. Uh -uh. I know. But. It's not worth it. Hmm? It's not worth it. What? The food. If I had to rate it. One out of ten, I'll give it a five. Dang. Dang, that's horrible. I have better Chinese food. Yeah. I don't like. Panda Express? I hate Panda Express. I don't even like it. Mm -mm. It smells better than it tastes to me. I don't mm -hmm. even eat it no more. That's all Chinese food, though. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Help. Nope. I beg the difference because let me tell you, I went to this Chinese restaurant in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name, and this was when I used to eat unclean food, and I used to eat duck, and that duck was good. That mm -hmm. was like the best Chinese restaurant I ever had, actually. 
or you can go to Thin Long and get some Chinese uh, garlic noodles. I have no idea what you're talking about. I just moved out here. Yeah, you did. But I'm just saying, like, they got some, some hitters. So I've had exquisite Chinese food. And for this price, I just feel like eh, they're getting over. Mm -hmm. They're getting over. Yeah. I think they're pricey because of the location. Yeah, it's sounds like location. If it's not good, it's not good. I definitely won't pay this again for the same uh, Chinese place. Definitely not. Mm -mm. But let's go. So. so right. Oh my yeah. God! Stop that noise! <laughs> So who's making that noise? I can't hear myself think. No. Look, everybody want to know is, what I think is how me and my wife came to be. And how we came to meet. And it's, very, it's a very interesting story. Uh, it's, a, it's a testimony and it's, it's a very unique story. And just knowing that hmm? well, I'm thinking out loud just knowing how we met and where we are now it's a testimony to all people out there people in relationships people that's married all that and I think that um, our story can help a lot of people in many different ways of how we met and how we conduct ourselves me and a young couple so I thought we are I'll start it out. Mm. So, how did you meet Michelle? <laughs> I thought you said you were starting it out. I am. I did start it out. Um, so, how we met was one of his brothers were friends or mutual friends with a friend of mine mm -hmm. and he showed him my social media mm -hmm. and oh, look at my nails oh my god he showed him my social media and then um what happened was he end up end up he end up <laughs> he decided to DM me and yeah. follow me, and write me, and stuff like that. And so he was polite. So I wrote him back. And we was talking back and forth for some time on social media. And then mm -hmm. I was like, why haven't this man asked me for my number? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't a thirst bucket. Mm -hmm. I realized that. Wasn't. And so I was like, okay, well, I gave him my number. Once I did that, um, we talked. What? Then we didn't know each other until we didn't face to face know each other. At we, all. Met, we technically met on Instagram, if you ask me. Instagram. But it was just like the mutual people that we knew. So that's how that went. A lot of people might think that's how unique. I'm not uh, not unique, but normal. But it's unique to us because. At the time, I was talking to many different females. All right, texting back and forth, not taking anything serious. And I remember just praying to the Most High, like I, I want, I want something serious. And being young like I am, I was like, I don't care how young I am. If I find the right woman that I'm praying for, I will marry her. I don't care. I will marry her. And I, I made this prayer from Most High, a secret, um, like in my closet, secretly. I cried out to Most High, like, I will marry her. And how it came about was, the time came, I think it was the month of December, I, I saw this female on Instagram. What stood out about her was, she... Okay, was, let's be real. He was talking to other girls, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. I wasn't the only person he was talking to. Yeah. And then I really want a cheeseburger. 
Like I could have made me a good old lamb burger with some like right. fried right. homemade fries. But like I was saying, crazy. Oh. Oh. Like I was saying, I was talking to all the females, and I ran across her, and what stood about her, was, what stood out about her was definitely how she was, how she carried herself, how she, how she wore her clothing, how she wore her head wraps, how she wrote about the Most High. At the time, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody that's into the most high, who knows the most high, and I'm, I was searching for that. So, I mean, I liked a couple of her pictures, and she liked a couple of my pictures back. And I was like, okay, that was the end of it. That was like the end of December. So I said I wasn't gonna DM her. I'm tired of DMing females. That's what I was saying to myself. I'm, I'm tired of DMing females. And so, I just went ahead, I think it was January 7th. I just went ahead and DM'd her. And when I DM'd her, I waited for about a, a couple hours. She DM'd me back. That's how I went. And she gave me the conversation of a lifetime. And I can't get that out of many females. I'm gonna tell you, girl, something. You gotta have, this is here, mouthpiece. You ain't gotta be the loudest chick in the world. You ain't gotta be that girl that wants all the attention from everybody when they walk in the room. But what it is, you gotta have a conversation with people. You gotta know how to converse with one another, especially if somebody that you're interested in. Show them your likes, your dislikes, show them your wants, your, what you don't want, things that interest you, you know? And when you do that, you can meet somebody that is funny you can meet somebody that that has pretty much it actually mm -hmm. it weeds out the bs from people it weeds out your likes and dislikes like i said so i got a little distracted for a second from that little screen but um yeah when we met we met we were both ready to love somebody mm -hmm. ready to be loved ready to build want somebody and all that good stuff so and then it wasn't it wasn't materialistic with us no mm -hmm. or it wasn't like this person looks good you know it mm -hmm. wasn't a physical thing first i mean of course you have to be attracted to somebody yeah. i feel like even if you're in truth like we're in truth you know we're a young hebrew couple you know and when you're in truth and stuff like that you seek like-minded people that read scripture and that mm -hmm pray and do all the stuff that you do but people forget that you have to be attracted to these people mm -hmm. i mean it's not like a hundred percent you have to be but it's nice to be attracted to the person you're marrying like mm -hmm. i i know people that is married that they're not attracted to their significant other i don't i think it's like okay i get it maybe it works for them in their relationship but mm -hmm. and so some people just don't work you know, because eventually you be like, I don't like this, I don't like that, and you ain't that cute. Yeah. God, you know, makes yep. it easier for you to sin yeah. and to do stuff and step out the relationship. Yep. And I think also, when we met, I would say we, um, our conversation, the way it went, it was so deep and. So uh, yeah, I didn't ask her for a number at first, and I wasn't gonna ask her for a number because I feel like she, I felt like you know, I'm not asking for no females for my number. If she volunteered to give me her number, I'll I'll take it. But um, after that, I remember she called me. I didn't answer the first time, but the conversation that we had over the phone was very deep because she definitely, definitely, definitely healed me in a way that a woman never did before. And I was going through so much stuff and she was hitting every single spot. Like, she was, more? yes. She was like, hey. And she was so bold when she first talked to me. She didn't know me or nothing. And, Tell me when. Hmm? Tell that's, me. that's good. Yeah. She was bold when she met me. I mean, when she talked to me over the phone. She was telling me, hey, you, 
don't be like this, don't be afraid of this. Uh, fear is this, all this, this and that. And I was like, wow. I never had a female talk to me like that before. So for me, it came down to we finally FaceTime. We was talking. We never, did we ever talk about sex at the beginning? It was all mm-hmm. about the most highest. We never talked about sex. We never talked about anything that wasn't. We had a pleasant conversation. Every mm-hmm. time we got to fall, it was very pleasant. It came long, very long. Mm-hmm. And eventually I was like, look, let's meet up. At the time, I just moved back from California. Ooh, it's a fly in here. Oh, no. It's some rain. I got it. I got to get it. Yeah. Get it. Ooh, here it goes. Yeah, like this I don't want rid of my poop. That nigga ran. Mm. Why is Gordon like this? Oh, there you go, there you go. I see it. Where is it? It went by. It's a thick thing to fly. It's a what? It's a thick <laughs> one. It's pretty big. Where'd it go? I don't know, babe. Where'd it go? 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 Where'd it go?